All right, so here we are again. And at this point, you know, I want to cut the head's the creature's head right off. <laughs> you know, how many times you get to hear that say that? Um, so what I'm going to do is polygroup it together. And again, this is shift and control, then shift and control alt for the deletion of, and then I'm just going to go in here and group visible. So now I have this separate group that I can grab a hold of using shift and control all the time. I think a nice feature would be is like having the ability to have this stuff ghosted out like polygroup ghost or something like that so you can just work on the head but the rest of the the body still visible somewhat like kind of a a white wireframe that appears back with no form whatsoever just a hint maybe zbrush 5 maybe my grandchildren will get that just looking out for them you know how it goes keeping it real <laughs> all right so here uh, what I'm going to do is go to the standard brush I'm going to be using this with uh, lazy mouse and subtract and I use this at an incredibly low level uh, for this phase and I'll be jumping around in, in uh, about three and four here. And I'm going to be using this wireframe against the creature. So I've decided I want to put the eyes right here on this edge loop. So I'm going to take this edge loop and move it down a little bit. So the eyes are going to go here. And rather than sculpt right there on that form or in between the the wireframe, what I want to do is put it on the wireframe. And that will help a great deal later on. Because you have to understand that you know this this polygon guy is going to be here in ZBrush and not much else until I like retopologize some of it. And you see me retopologize something that's a painful process, so I want to stay away from retopologizing as much as I can and work on oh just the other things anything but that as my brain goes back to the retopologization phase ok 
getting back to the skull lecture and the, the usefulness of knowing how to make a skull. And how you can borrow skull features onto different creatures. And you can see what happens now. Look at it's all on that that initial line. So you can use these initial lines to really tweak out the character some. You can pull these forms in and out very quickly at a lower level. and still have it kind of maintained, you know, I mean, I can understand where things are at a lower level. I don't have to keep jumping up in the, the million polygon range just to, just to make a small tweak. Okay. Which leads me to the point that I have to right now. ears, what to do, ZBrush's uh, forte is the fact that we make these ears that are just pulled out clay messness. So I'm, I'm wrecking the topology in this region just to sacrifice for an ear. But I do it in such a way that at least, you know, I'll smooth. A lot of artists will just do that. So, you know, I'll pull out, but then go back and smooth it out a little bit. That'll help later. And then take the standard brush. Develop some interesting ear here. One that is very streamlined. I mean, like, it's not facing forward but maybe tilted back more I'm always rotating around, always. I'm always looking at forms, how they interact with each other. Like, how's that look in the front view? Can you see the ears? See the ears when you tip, but not here. Is that a bad thing? Maybe I just want the small hint that there are ears in the front view.
pull some of this form back so I can connect the ear a little bit better. You see what I'm doing? I'm just taking the form and pushing it back with a standard brush and then I'll end up smoothing it out. But this is a way of kind of digging out <laughs> this ear. He almost looks like a Trixie imp type creature. Okay, so meet me in the next video.